COVID-19 cases surpassing 11,000, Kong vendors received training to reduce chances of food poisoning, and the Bahamas Crisis Center mourning the loss of one of their own. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lissy Bastian. It's Thursday, May 13th. Thanks for staying with us. Topping news tonight, COVID-19 cases in country beyond the 11,000 mark, with health officials confirming 58 new additional cases for the Bahamas. These are the figures for Wednesday, May 12th. 56 cases confirmed on New Providence and one case each on Grand Bahama and Eleuthera. These cases pushing the national count to 11,024. COVID death toll in country also increasing by one. Health officials confirming the unfortunate death of an 88-year-old man of New Providence who died on Wednesday. His death pushes the total COVID-19 deaths to 216. Now, of the new infections in country, one case on New Providence has a history of travel within 14 days. A further breakdown of the cases indicate that 29 are males and 28 are females. That said, there are now 764 active cases of the virus in the country, 58 of which are in hospital, 49 considered moderately ill and 9 in the intensive care unit. 498 tests were completed yesterday, 422 came back negative, 9 were repeat tests and 9 were inconclusive. 35 recoveries were also reported yesterday, pushing total recoveries to 9,967. To date, 91,550 tests have been completed. Governor General Sir Cornelius A. Smith and Lady Smith receiving their second jab of the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine at Loyola Hall this morning. The Governor General, while he says this time around was less painful than the first, says he's happy to be fully vaccinated. More importantly, um, I am so very pleased that I've been able to have had the second uh, vaccination done. And what this has done, it has now made sure that I and my family are less likely to contract the virus. That means that we are less likely to pass it on to anybody else. And so I encourage Bahamians everywhere in order to keep themselves safe, in order to make sure that their families are safe, that they ought to come and take the vaccine. 36,000 individuals have been vaccinated since the vaccine campaign began back in March this year. Asked what he looks forward to now that he's fully vaccinated, Sir Cornelius says this. What I'm looking forward to is that uh, other Bahamians, all Bahamians, uh, decide that they would want to come and make sure that they get vaccinated. They make sure that we can open up our country so that our economy uh, begins to tick again, that there are more jobs to come available, and we have both a healthy country and a country where everybody is fully employed. Nurse Kimberly Josie McPhee administered the vaccine this morning to the Governor General and his wife. Sir Cornelius applauded health officials in the COVID fight. With the recent reports of food poisoning, particularly as it relates to Kong poisoning, the government is taking steps to ensure that food handlers nationwide are using best practices. Today, the focus was at the Potter's Key Dock. Doreen Saunders was there and takes a look. Multiple government agencies have come together to ensure public health by helping to reduce the chances of food poisoning by using proper sanitization and operation methods. This comes on the heels of several individuals receiving medical attention for conch poisoning two weeks ago. This, the first in a series of training sessions spearheaded by the Bahamas Agricultural Health and Food and Safety Authority, took place on Wednesday at Potter's Key and focused on both the conch and food vendors. The health authorities made it absolutely clear that each vendor and their staff must undergo the training. Dr. Patricia Johnson, Director of the Food Safety and Quality, delivered the message. We invite you to please come under the tent underneath the bridge. Uh, this training is very important to help you to be able to provide safe food for your consumers. 
There were many vendors who embraced the opportunity, while others seemed reluctant to comply. For those vendors that were not happy about the required training, Dr. Johnson, who says the public health is paramount, pulled no punches. Now, I understand that um, many of you feel very apprehensive on coming here this morning. But I can promise you this. BAFSA, the organization I'm with, along with our partners, the, the Department of Environmental Health Services and the Ministry of Health, in particular DEHS, we will be coming around to do inspections of your facilities. And if anyone is found to not be engaging in best practices, we will shut you down. Now, we're asking you to come out to, to, to this seminar today and see what it is that you need to implement to improve your business. Some of you I know are doing it right. Don't get me wrong. Some of you are doing a great job. And we applaud you for that. But we want you, even if you're doing a great job, we still want you to come out. Wendy Constantine, president of the Bahamas Dock Allied Venues Association at Potter's Key, says the majority of the members of the association are happy to comply with best practices in their establishment when it comes to food safety. Actually, I was approached by Ms. Johnson from Basco to have this seminar, and we were more than willing to take part in the seminar. The vendors were more than happy to assist and to be a part of this because they want to ensure that they are giving excellent service they want to ensure that they're preparing their account in the right manner. We want to ensure that we can control this outbreak and so it doesn't get any worse than what it is. The four-part series on food safety training will include Blue Hills and Montague Fish Markets and the Fish Fry at Arawak Key. Other government agencies involved included the Department of Environmental Health and the Ministry of Health, among the others. Jerino Saunders. JCN News. Ready to serve the Progressive Liberal Party ratifying seven more candidates for the upcoming general elections. Former Tourism Minister and former Member of Parliament for West Grand Bahama and Bimini, Obi Wilshkom among the seven. Earlier this year, Mr. Wilshkom unofficially secured votes as the PLP's candidate nominee for the Bimini constituency in the upcoming 2022 general elections. At the time, he had noted that this was the wish of the people and sent a message to the party. The other six newly ratified candidates include Patricia DeVoe for Bamboo Town, Kurt G. Hollingsworth for Marco City, Leon Lundy for Mangrove Key and South Andros, Ginger Moxie for Pine Ridge, James Roll Turner for East Grand Bahama, and Kirk Russell for Central Grand Bahama. During an outdoor meeting at the PLP's headquarters on Wednesday evening, PLP leader Philip Davis during the brief meeting told supporters that the party has revolutionized its candidate selection process and in an open, transparent and transformative way selected an eclectic, diverse and talented group of women and men who will be the future of the party. Mr. Davis also used the opportunity to blast the government's last four years in office. The opposition leader contends that the last four years of the Free National Movement government has been one of smoke and mirrors. That's saying one thing and doing another, or saying one thing and doing nothing at all. Mr. Davis further contends that whenever Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis makes up his mind to ring the bell, soon is not soon enough. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.